Okay, I just want to take a couple minutes to talk about propane cylinders and how to get the most out of your propane cylinders. Not in terms of actually squeezing every last ounce out of it, but making sure that you have enough on hand and can pretty much know exactly how long they're going to last per can per use. Now, each propane cylinder will tell you exactly how much there is inside by the net weight designation. In this case, I'm using the Coleman propane fuel, and it has 16.4 ounces or 465 grams. Since I have a scale here, which does both pounds and grams. I prefer to use grams because grams are a smaller unit of measurement and that will give you, in my opinion, a more precise measure of how much you're using and how much you have remaining. Converting from pounds to ounces and all that stuff is just too cumbersome. So if you actually do have something that is um, that can read in grams you can just use grams and that way you don't have to worry about doing too much um, conversion you can just use the grams and then subtract from that okay so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually weigh one of these full canisters so let's zoom in on this scale Okay, we're all zoomed in, and I'm going to turn it on. Switch to my grams setting, and weigh the canister, which is which contains 465 grams of propane. Okay, we have a total weight of 880 grams. So what you can quickly do, if you so desire to, it's not totally necessary, you can take that eight eighty, subtract four six five, and let me see you have five, that'd be seven, one take that and let me see that'll be seven three so according to nope would that be nope there you go nine three ninety five so according to this the actual weight of the canister is three hundred and ninety five grams because you have eight hundred and eighty total grams 465 grams of gas and the 395 leaves the weight of the container. You really don't need to know the weight of the container but just for demonstration purposes just in case you actually do want to know that information there it is. And let's just contrast that. There goes my trusty heater again. Let's just contrast that with another one, which may not necessarily weigh the same because I have weighed several of these and they do seem to vary somewhat. Okay, so that's 880 again. That's 865. So you have a 15 gram difference. Okay, so that's 860, that's a 20 gram difference. And all of these uh, are supposed to be pretty much the same. And for all intents and purposes, I would say that they are. It's probably just certain uh, ages of the containers, perhaps differences in the metal differences in the construction, um, perhaps 
the plastic on the bottom may be a little different, a little thicker, you know, different configurations or whatever. And so you're going to have a little variance. So one thing that you might want to do is actually, um, if you so desire to, put the total weight on each cylinder and that way once you do your uh, subtraction uh, then you'll have that information so let's just go back to let's just assume that we're using one of the 880s oops turn this guy back on yes for the sake of simplicity let's just assume that we're using one of the 880s okay give me an 880 I want 880 Look on it. There you go. So we know that it's 880. All right. And now, just assuming, we're just going to assume that we had already pre weighed this one, and this one weighed 880, and we put it on the scale, and now it's weighing 750. All right. So we'll have 880 minus 750 which will then equal 130 okay so now we have 130 all right and with this 130 the only thing that that could possibly be, since we knew the weight um, when it was new, we weighed it after it's been used, and the only thing that it could possibly be is the amount of gas that we've used from that. So we've used 130 grams of gas. All right. Now, with this information, if you know the run time, that it took in order to use this 130 grams let's say that it took you 30 minutes you know that this thing or whatever it is your stove or heater is using 130 grams per 30 minutes all right all right and so with this information, 130 grams per 30 minutes, you can then determine how many meals, let's say that, that 30 minutes represents two meals. So if that represents two meals, we would say that um, using 65 grams every 15 minutes. So you're using 65 grams of gas every 15 minutes for one meal. All right, it's getting a little complicated, but I think you guys are following what I'm saying here. Now, if you know that 65 grams of gas can produce one meal, then you can figure out how many meals 465 grams can get you, assuming that you use the same conditions, same types of meals, etc. Let me just grab a calculator and figure out how many potential meals that is. One second. Okay, my handy dandy calculator tells me that if you divide 465 that's approximately 7. Actually it's 7.15 but we'll just call it 7. So you can get 7 meals per tank all right so seven meals per tank now how many meals are you going to cook in a day two three one so if you cook one meal per day with one of these guys whatever your stove happens to be and you just use this for food or for preparing your meal one of these will last you approximately seven days So you can make a determination of how many days worth of cylinders you want to accumulate. I've accumulated quite a few. All 
All right, you can see my propane cylinders there. And a couple more here. And I know that just using this example, each one of these will last me seven days if I decide to prepare one meal per day. Under an emergency situation, that might be enough. It might not be enough. But at least you have some idea of how much you're going to have to accumulate and also how long you have until you run out of fuel to prepare your meals. That could be very important in your survival in your survival prep as well. In any case, I hope that this was somewhat helpful. Um, I know people may not, they may or may not know, you know, exactly how to calculate this. And if you guys use a different method, if you even use a method at all, I'd be interested to know. And one other thing of note, um, I noticed as I was inspecting my canisters that I was getting some surface thrust on some of these. Now this can be easily taken care of by just chipping off some of the paint that's on there, some of the surfacing material, and applying another coat of paint. It doesn't have to be much, it could be just a spray paint or um, a, a brush on paint. Just be careful not to get it on the threads. You don't want to compromise that. But the best thing would be to actually use this up, discard the can, recycle it if you can, depending upon your um, municipality, and replace it with a fresher can. These things only last so long. I'm not sure exactly how long these things will last, but as you can see, this is starting to corrode. And this particular one, I do not have a date um, that I purchased it on, but each can, each cylinder, should have a date that it was produced. And it appears as if this one was 12-01-2005. and you can see some other surface rust on there so this bad boy is slated for use and hopefully I'll have some video showing me using some of these cylinders alright thanks for watching and let me know what you think about this if you have another way if you think I've made some mistakes in my uh, calculations I would definitely love to hear your uh, your views on this. Thanks. Bye-bye.